Alrighty guys, welcome back to another one. Today, we're breaking down Federal's Power Shock Maximum Rifled Slug Hollow Point, whatever that means. 16 gauge slug, made in the USA of course. Not all Federals are, but anyway. Here's what I paid for them. The side of the box, 4 fifth ounce or 0 .80. 1600 FPS, two and three quarter inch. 16 gauge does not have a three inch shell if you didn't know. It's the only gauge that doesn't besides 24 and 32. If you want to read anything on the box, just give it a pause. Had it upside down. There you go. Sorry about that. Here's what the shell looks like. Purple and gold, the color of royalty. I do want to mention whenever I break these down, I do try to find the worst looking shell in the box. You can see maybe right there that the crimp is a little bit oblong and not fully touching the slug all the way around that is the only one in the box that was like that so this is the one i'm breaking down but federal 209a primer high brass if you want to call it high brass and no it's not really brass it's brass plated steel how many times can i say brass in 10 seconds brass but you can see the hollow point this should be a 67 caliber slug and since we're doing 16 gauge and a purple and gold haul nonetheless, I'm using my fancy knife today. It's just a rough rider, but it looks fancy. Can you guys tell if that's silver or gold? In person, it's it's brass, but it looks like just regular stainless steel in this lighting. Weird. I like the ivory handle though. <laughs> Before moving on with that though, I do want to mention there are other 16 gauge slugs on the market. Now the Winchesters here are discontinued, and yes, they did make it to the modern box days, but I think these were discontinued about 10 years ago from what I can gather. This box is from the late 80s or 90s, I'm really not sure, but it's older. And uh, what's cool about these, they are in the compressioned formed hall. Compression formed, not compressioned. But yeah, same thing as the original AA hauls, just in 16 gauge. These are tapered very cool yeah it's a little old so it's kind of faded and kind of worn out but it'll still shoot actually when i was growing up i fired a whole bunch of these i wish i saved the hauls but i didn't always knew someday i'd get into reloading but i don't know 16 gauge was always my favorite i just didn't save many of the hauls wish i did though because these compression formed hauls are hard to get in 16 gauge now Remington does make a 16 gauge slug, but I don't have any. That'll change soon, I hope. Rottweil by Brennicke. Well, the brand is Rottweil. They're using a Brennicke slug. This is what they look like. Clear hull. I think these are a little bit older because the uh, hull is a little bit yellowed. And I don't know if you can see, but the crimp is a little bit uh, belled out on top. That's fine. Now these, I expect to be super accurate. I have no idea what the listed velocity is. I do not think it says on the box, but it's a one ounce slug, 27 grams. That ain't right. 28 grams is an ounce. Weird. Max 1050 bar. I assume these are loaded to near maximum pressure. Two and three quarter inch. Yeah, 415 grains. That is not an ounce. These are cool. I don't plan on doing a breakdown video on these because, well, you can kind of see what's in them. We have powder, a Shadot primer. So this is a Shadot hull. I don't know what powder it is. It's some Euro powder, plastic gas seal, nitro card, fiber cushion wad, nitro card, and then the slug. Pretty cool. For what it's worth, I paid $6.95 for these, but when I was a kid, the Kmart here in town had these for $2.99 a box. I've seen them for $3.99 a few years later, and uh, now eh, they're kind of hard to find, but I did pay $6.95 for these about two months ago at uh, Steve's Guns in Ashland, Kentucky. These Brennickies were sold at Walmart here locally for $4.27 a box. I have no idea how old these are. <laughs> Judging by that price, I'm going to say at least 20 years, but they're still cool nonetheless. I paid... I think $12.99 at Steve's for these. This is a bit more fancy slug than the Winchesters are. 
All right, so the powder charge in this looks like it's about 26 grains. The wind is messing with it a little bit, but it settled at 26 for a good 20 seconds. So it's 26 grains, we'll call it that. No idea what the powder is. It looks, again, like Alliance Steel, if my camera would focus, but it's probably not Alliance Steel. Looks like it though. But as for components, this is different. We have a, I wouldn't call it a podium wad because Federal has a podium wad and it's the full wad. This is a gas seal and I'll just call it a stem for lack of a better term. This is very similar to what's in Federal's target loads like the uh, Top Guns. Same kind of thing going on there, but never seen that in a slug load. And then we have a one quarter inch nitro card. That's fairly standard for a slug load. Here's the slug. Rifled, hollow point, foster slug. Looks really good to me. Not in the uh, best shape, but it's not bad at all. Here's a better view of the powder. And again, it looks exactly like Alliance Steel, but probably is not Alliance Steel. I will mention that Federal's parent company, Vista Outdoors, does own Federal Remington and Alliant Powder. So there's a chance it could be. Now, as for the slug, it weighs 351.2 grains. That's what it was settled on for a while. The wind is messing with it slightly, but let's just call it a 350 grain slug. And in ounces, that would be 0 0.80. So exactly four fifths of an ounce. Good job, Federal. I'm not sure how well you guys can pick this up, but we do have a paper base wad. All Federal 16 gauge have paper base wads and 10 gauge, but I'm not sure if that's a 209A primer. I've never seen a Federal primer with a blue sealant over the, uh, well, inside the primer. Looks like a 209A, but again, I've never seen blue. They've always been pink. Weird. I chose not to do a cutaway on this one because otherwise I would have to get rid of the hull. I can trim that flush with one of Gary's hull trimmers and make that completely even across the top and reuse it as a two and a half inch. Now, what I've done here is taken a game load hull, I'll pick that up in just a second, and took a tapered curling iron and I straightened the crimp out. It no longer has any fold crimp memory at all. I can put this back together, back into a federal hull and roll it. You can see the difference right here what the uh, tapered curling iron does to them. It heats up the plastic and gets rid of the crimp memory. Basically makes it a new haul again. And as you can see, it went back together without any issues, although I did accidentally touch the uh, top of the slug with the roll crimp tool. Whoops. But for the roll crimp tool, I used a Reloaders Network four pin, and then I tapered it with a got being two. And that's it. One more thing I want to mention before signing this off, these are not 67 caliber, they're about 66 caliber, which is a little bit underbore for a 16 gauge slug. If you don't know, foster slugs are completely safe to fire through full chokes. And I think Federal just made it a little bit undersized, just like their 10 gauge slug for guns with fixed full chokes. I do recommend trying this Mug Zero Sugar root beer. I hate root beer. But this is not bad at all. I actually like it quite a lot. My wife picked this up and just wanted to recommend it to you guys. But thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.